Hey everyone, Brendan Snyder here. How are you? Thanks so much for joining me and welcome to Simply the Best Rock Albums. So in the world of rock, there are a lot of stellar albums out there. We all know them. There's the classics that we love that we reach for, the ones we hear on the radio all the time. But the term rock, the general idea of it can mean so many different things. Good thing there are genres that delineate musical style that give us a feel and understanding of what it is that we're going to hear. So for this video, I'm going to be running through five albums that are simply the best in their respective genres of rock. And we'll get into that here in just a bit. But before we get started, if you're new to my channel and haven't already hit the subscribe button, please do. Also, leave a comment, hit like. All those things do help support my channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus, by turning on notifications, you're going to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of rock, just like this with simply the best rock albums. Okay, so kicking things off here, we're just starting in with general rock music, ACDC Back in Black from 1980, their sixth studio album internationally, because they did release... Uh, couple different albums originally in Australia that later combined or changed uh, for the U.S. So internationally, sixth studio album, this one here being the classic album that debuts with Brian Johnson on it. And so also being a tribute to former Fallen frontman Bon Scott. Um, and then on top of that, it was a comeback album because the band had done one of their biggest albums to date at that point with... Highway to Hell, and then with the passing of Bon Scott, they had to make a comeback with somebody new, Brian Johnson. And so while Highway to Hell from 1979 certainly could be considered one of the best albums in its own right, I'm choosing this one here. And Back in Black having five bona fide classic hit songs on it, Shoot to Thrill, Hell's Bells, the title track Back in Black, you Shook Me All Night Long, Rock and Roll Ain't Noise Pollution. But the thing is, I've actually heard all 10 songs from this album on the radio at different times. So you might have heard me say those five songs as hits, and you may be thinking five other ones, because the whole album itself is just that good, that classic, that we hear that much of it on the radio and in pop culture um, and so forth. So even when a DJ wants to play a deep cut off of this thing, Generally, we all know it. And that's kind of one of the things. I know this album inside and out. And considering it was produced by Robert John Mutt Lang, who, of course, has worked with so many um, other amazing artists, Foreigner and Def Leppard, and the list goes on. It's no wonder, though, that the songs on here are so good. I mean, essentially, this album is a greatest hits of rock a greatest hits for ACDC. I mean, you name it, you can go either way on it. It's one of those albums I think everyone should have in their collection. And with over 50 million albums sold worldwide, I mean, how can you argue with that? All right, next genre, hard rock album. Guns N' Roses' Appetite for Destruction, their debut studio album that would go on to sell 18 million copies in the U.S. and an estimated 30 million copies around the world, making it the largest selling debut album of all time, at least so far. So this album here is one of the dirtiest, sleaziest hard rock masterpieces ever recorded, in my opinion. They blend the classic stylings of the Rolling Stones with the blues undertones of Aerosmith making it one of the best rock albums ever. Every song on here is good. You've got album opener, Welcome to the Jungle, on here that's just straight up gritty hard rock. Then you've got Paradise City that starts off melodic but ends really hard rock. And, and Sweet Child of Mine on it. It's got one of the most amazing and greatest guitar riffs ever done by Slash. But the thing is, the deep cuts on this one here, Mr. Brownstone, uh, Night Train, Rocket Queen, those songs are just as big as the other ones on here. This is one of those albums where the band almost plays the whole thing in concert. And at any given time, they have because all of the songs on here are standout songs. But the thing, too, is that they're not just great songs. For me, what I've noticed is the song structure on it makes it very different and unique to most songs, most bands that are out there. Because the songs themselves sometimes feel like multiple songs on here, bringing lots of character and life to each one where the song can turn on a dime. You think you're listening to one thing, next thing you know you're listening to something else, proving 
just an amount of, or providing, I should say, an amount of uncertainty and dangers that was very evident at the time in the 80s when this album came out in 1987. To me, there will never be another rock album like this one released, in my opinion. We'll have to wait and see, of course, but this album is a classic. All right, next one up, Arena Rock, Boston, their self-titled release from 1976, debut studio album that would go on to sell 17 million copies in the U.S., so almost as many as Guns N' Roses' Appetite for Destruction. Maybe one day Boston will pass Guns N' Roses, but for now, they sit at 17 million. Uh, one of the finest recorded and produced albums ever, but what's interesting is the album itself was actually a demo. It was just enhanced in the studio by guitarist Tom Schultz, who uh, certainly by... Uh, hearing this album here, you can see that he is a studio genius and one who uses the layered effect to great, great potential, uh, making the album sound really big and full. Of course, that would uh, become a mainstay for Robert John Mutt Lang and bands like Def Leppard, but guitarist Tom Schultz was one of the first to do it on this album here. So the sound of this one, it's a mix of electric and acoustic instrumentation, huge soaring vocals and guitars to match, very, you know, classic sounding songs on here, more than a feeling, with that beautiful intro to one of the greatest 70s rock songs ever, Peace of Mind, that one has a perfect melodic um, and acoustic electric sound to it, fantastic riffing on it, foreplay, long time, has that amazing uh, organ intro on it just to die for, but it's also got those huge big drums. And I kind of like that dichotomy on it, the organ with the drum sound, something you don't hear very often. And Rock and Roll Band, which is a perfect song, title if ever, and certainly a rockin' good groove on that one, making this one a powerful rockin' masterpiece of an album, in my opinion. All right, next one up, Melodic Rock. Journey Escape from 1981, seventh studio album from them, nine million copies sold in the U.S. This one here featuring the songs Don't Stop Believin', which is just one of the most iconic songs out there. has been used in so many TV shows, movies, uh, advertisements, um, uh, political campaigns. I mean, you name it, this song has been used for it. It's also one of the biggest sounding songs ever. Uh, the way that the piano and the guitar sort of build at the beginning and then the crash of the drums come in, I think is absolutely perfection. The song Who's Crying Now, where the piano and vocals pair up nicely in this one and then the band sort of accentuates the rest of the sound throughout creating uh, just a melodic rock song at its best. And then you've got Open Arms, which is one of the greatest ballads ever written. Uh, one of the, maybe even arguably one of the songs that created the blueprint for the power ballad. And the album here, you've got um, the first one that Jonathan Kane would appear on, keyboardist, who brought, I think, a more radio-friendly vibe to the band. You've got heartfelt vocals on here coming from the amazing, emotionally sung uh, lyrics by Steve Perry. And then big, huge guitars from Neil Sean on here that just emphasize everything about this album perfectly. Uh, they don't overpower, they don't uh, certainly aren't underpowered on here, but the accent of everything is amazing, making this one timeless classic album, in my opinion. All right, and the last one we're going to talk about, prog rock, goes to Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon from 1973, their eighth studio album. 15 million copies sold in the U.S. and an estimated 45 million copies around the world. One of the biggest all-time selling albums. Uh, the studio and recording achievements that were made by this one certainly warrants its selection all on its own, but the boundaries that this album broke that allowed it to be the longest running album in Billboard history in 957 weeks, at least the last time I checked on it, also makes for this album here being a standout album. The album's sound is glorious, beautiful, dark, it's spiritual. I mean, the list of adjectives can go on and on for this. The guitar nuances from David Gilmour are outstanding. Uh, featuring classic songs like Time, 
which is dark yet uplifting. Uh, it's got some of the best drumming from Nick Mason on here, who doesn't get enough love, in my opinion, for his contributions to the band. The Great Gig in the Sky. This one here is a beautiful piece of uh, keyboard work from Rick Wright, but it's those vocals that really stand out. And what I always found fascinating was that they were actually made up on the spot by the guest female vocalist. This wasn't anything that was written for her, just making it even better when you know that. And of course, Money, which is an utter classic and that instantly recognizable cha-ching sound at the beginning of it and the classic bass line from Roger Waters. All of these things making it quite possibly a, a perfect album if ever there was one. I know that is a heady statement, but certainly that is the way I feel about this album. And so there you go, five albums that are simply the best in their respective genre of rock. I'm sure you guys have your own opinions and selections for what would make up those five different genres of rock as the best album. Um, and we could do this all day long, but uh, leave your comments below. Let me know your thoughts and we'll have a good time running through all of that. So, all right, everyone, take care, have a good one, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.